So pleased to be back with you. And on the line with us is Congressman G.K. Butterfield, Jr., uh, U.S. Congressman representing the 1st District of North Carolina, co-chair of the Congressional Black Cauc Caucus. Uh, Congressman Butterfield, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon to you and your listeners. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, first of all, uh, I, I'd like to talk with you about you know what's going on in 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 your state in that area with with the latest police shootings. Your your thoughts on on? Well, we we have a very sad situation down in Charlotte, but it's it's reminiscent of other episodes that have happened all across the country over the last few years, and it's absolutely disgusting. It's despicable, and we've got to find a way to stop it. And as I told uh, Attorney General Lynch yesterday, uh, the federal government has a role to play in, 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 in finding a solution to the unlawful killing of, of innocent, unarmed African-American men and women on the streets of America. There's got to be a solution. Yeah. And we reach the solution by state, local, and federal governments working together. It seems like that. It seems, you know, I, I've, I've heard a lot of suggestions, including national policing standards, uh, uh, national police hiring standards, uh, you know, uh, in any case where a police officer uh, kills a person, an immediate DOJ investigation. Um, the the, uh, the uh, 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 Chauncey DeVega has suggested that every police officer in America should have liability insurance, just like doctors and nurses do, and, you know, that, that there's, you know, because they have the ability to kill people as well. And, uh, you know, if they screw up, and uh, that so that they don't have quite the immunity. You know, any thoughts on specific policy? Is there anything moving through Congress? Is anybody talking about doing anything about this? Well, the Congressional Black Caucus has authored several bills that will deal with uh, with with police brutality, and certainly uh, those that you mentioned have have certainly been considered and are on the table. But body cameras and and dash cams and all vehicles and and diversity training and sensitivity training for police officers when they come on the police force. They, they must be made to understand that uh, any time anytime an arrest situation begins to escalate, you don't resort to killing the, the, the subject of the arrest. Uh, there has to be uh, a sensible approach to making an arrest. And if an unarmed person is, is unruly uh, during an arrest, you can use your taser. You can use other method, methods. You can call for backup. You simply don't pull your gun and start shooting. Too many... Uh, innocent people have been murdered by the police who were unarmed. Right. Absolutely. Meanwhile, at the uh, at Harvard University, at the Kennedy School of Government, the Shorenstein Center on Media Politics and Public Policy, um, Thomas Patterson and uh, colleagues have just completed a three-part study of media coverage of the uh, Trump-Clinton election, or of the whole election. The first part of the report was all of 2015, the second and third parts of the first and half, half and, you know, the pre-convention uh, and then the post-convention time of this year. And uh, they looked at five television networks, ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox, and NBC, and five leading newspapers, LA Times, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, USA Today. And what they found, and I'll quote this, not a single policy proposal accounted for even 1% of Hillary Clinton's convention period coverage, and collectively her policy stances accounted for a mere 4% of coverage. And it's in the same neighborhood for Donald Trump, although he gets 11% in, in, in some areas because uh, they're, they're considering his talking about the wall as a, quote, policy position. Um, given that our media has done such a terrible job of conveying Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party's policy positions to Americans, would you like to try? <laughs> Well, let, let, let me tell you, Hillary has uh, an abundance of policy positions. In, in fact, people uh, at times criticize her for being too wonky. Uh, but she has dozens of policy proposals that are all over the Internet. She talks about them uh, at every uh, opportunity. And uh, people are just tuning out some of those, those positions. And so we've got to pay attention, uh, starting with the first debate, which is going to be Monday night. Hopefully the American people will listen very carefully uh, to Hillary's policy positions, because she is an extraordinary public servant who's been at this stuff now for, for more than 30 years, and, and we know all the roles that she's played over the last 30 years. She knows the world. She knows the country. Uh, she knows the good and the bad. She knows how to position the United States to be even greater than it is today. Uh, when you compare her to Donald Trump, there's simply no comparison. I mean, he's, a, he's an egotistical guy. He's dangerous. He's conceited, um, and, and he's a bigot. And, mm. and I say that uh, very carefully because I don't 
recklessly label people. But Donald Trump is a bigot, and 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 the world knows it. And, yeah. and it is unthinkable that he would be elected president. And so Hillary's policies are right there for people to see. The media needs to tune in a little bit more and put a spotlight on her policy positions. In the first 200 days of her administration, uh, you're going to see uh, a, 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 a rollout of some major initiatives that are going to benefit uh, low-income families, middle-income middle, middle income families, students, seniors. Uh, you're going to see it's going to be a, a, a position that's going to make the world safer, protect the homeland. It's going to be an approach to immigration reform. Uh, right now, she has a team at work developing the first 100 and 200 days of her administration. We are ready to hit the ground running. Yeah. What do you see as the as the major policy issues that that uh, we should be paying attention to? Well, we've got to separate international from domestic. Obviously, if we're talking international, then the, the whole threat of ISIS. You know, we've got to find a way to contain ISIS without blowing up the world. And 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 having served as the Secretary of State. Uh, Hillary is well positioned to develop a sensible approach uh, to containing ISIS and then eliminating them eventually. Uh, but uh, just to go in and kill innocent people, you know, in Syria and in Afghanistan, as Donald Trump has suggested, is not a responsible way to go. Now, once you separate international policy from domestic policy, then then we've got to get into the weeds. We've got to talk about creating jobs. That's what the American people want. Number one. Uh, with all of our polling, number one suggests that the American people want to create jobs in America and bring jobs that have left the country back into the country. And we do that in many ways. First of all, we've got to revise our tax structure uh, to make it appealing for companies to, to grow American jobs. We've got to give uh, corporations an opportunity to bring these lost jobs uh, back to our shore. Uh, and we've got to, to create an infrastructure. Uh, that would be appealing to American corporations. The U.S. infrastructure is 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 dilapidated, uh, and in some parts, it's dangerous. We've got to rebuild our highways and our roads, uh, and our tunnels and our bridges, and you know, and and this creates jobs. It creates good-paying jobs by building and rebuilding the infrastructure. We've got to bring our schools into the 21st century, and H Hillary talks about that as everywhere everywhere she goes. Uh, criminal justice reform, that's on her agenda, and, and it's certainly on my agenda. Uh, we've got to reform the criminal justice system, and these senseless police shootings must stop. Uh, civilian shootings must stop. We've got to contain uh, the use of firearms. And she has a plan, no fly, no buy. If you're too dangerous to get on an airplane and dog on it, uh, you're too dangerous to, to purchase a, a firearm. Uh, and so these are sensible ideas that she's ready to hit the ground running with during the first 100 and 200 days of, of her administration. Yeah. What do we do about our intellectual infrastructure? Um, you know, we, we, we know that uh, she, she wants uh, families that make less than $125,000 a year to be able to send their kids to, uh, uh, or people who earn less than $125,000 a year to, for themselves, actually, to, uh, to be able to go to college, in public colleges and universities for free and, and community colleges. But what, what do we do about the student debt? There's over a trillion dollars worth of student debt out there that because of this 2005 bankruptcy law cannot be discharged in bankruptcy. Um, what, what are the solutions for that, in your opinion? Well, you just talked about two things. You talked about free college. Let's, let's take that first. Um, yes, Hillary does propose free college at, at public colleges and universities. Uh, college education now is too expensive. Uh, Forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year, unacceptable. Uh, the government has a role to play in, in helping our younger generation get into college, get a degree, go to work, pay taxes, contribute to America, support their families, and to, to burden students with, with $100,000 college debt uh, when finishing uh, undergraduate or graduate school is not the way to go. And so she has this very creative and, and novel idea of free, of free community colleges and free colleges. We've got to find a way to pay for it. She's placed on the table a, a mechanism for paying for, for this uh, college tuition uh, that's, uh, that's going to be required. And we need to have that debate. Uh, yeah. She's going to put it on the table. We will have that debate. Well, her mechanism is basically taxing rich people, which makes perfect sense to me. I mean, the top tax Absolutely. rate has, was 74 uh, percent yeah. right up until the middle of the Reagan administration. Absolutely. And that top tax rate gave us the best prosperity this country's ever seen. Well, we don't bite our lip. We don't bite our tongue in talking about taxing the rich just a little bit more. 
And rich people tell me all of the time, I've got rich acquaintances. I've got rich people who visit me here in Washington, and they tell me, Congressman, if we can get this economy moving, I don't mind paying more taxes. Right. If we can bring American jobs home, I count me in. I'm ready to do yep. it. Yep. College so, debt. So what do we do about college debt? Yeah. College debt is a huge burden, over a trillion dollars on the backs of our students. We've got to give students an opportunity to restructure uh, their student loans. We've got to write off some of it. We've got to trade community service for, for college debt. Uh, there, there are creative ways that, that we can explore uh, that can take this burden off of our students. Uh, right now, some people have gotten rich uh, over these student uh, student loans over the years. Yeah, uh, and, including and that's, that's, Donald Trump. The, 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 the interest rate on student loans needs to be zero. Yeah. Or 0 0.1, you know, yeah. just yeah. enough to pay the administrative cost. I'm, I'm absolutely with you. Congressman G.K. Butterfield, Jr., thank you so much, sir, for being with us today. Well, thank you, and so much is happening in the world, and our citizens need to pay attention. Indeed. Yes. Thank you. This is the Tom Hartman Program.